Hello friends, this is Rupesh and I'm watching CBP Nerds video series on STL series and this video is about STD stack in C++. So if you are thinking that this is the exact stack what we studied in our data structure algorithm classes, then you are actually correct. And this is your stack LIFO, correct? Last in, first out. So whatever goes last will come out first. So what I mean is I inserted one before, then two, then three. Now, if I want to take out anything from this stack, and as I said, this is a stack. So I will take out three first, then two, then one. So it's like you go into the parties, right? So there are stack of plates placed one top of another, right? So this is kind of a stack. So can you imagine, let's suppose this is your table. And if someone is putting a first plate, like this is your first plate. This is your second plate, this is your third plate, and this is fourth plate. So which plate was kept first? Obviously this one. So when they was arranging, they put this one first, then this one second, this one third, and this one fourth. Now if you go and want to take a plate, you will take this plate out first, then this one, then this one, and then this one. So this behavior is a stack behavior. And this particular thing is used to solve so many problems. I can tell you this is one of the important data structure. And now if you want to use this data structure in C++, you can use it. So let's see what are the different points about this data structure. So the first point is stack class is a container adapter. Yes, before this we learned stdq and that was also a container adapter. And that time I missed to tell that what is the meaning of this container adapter. You might have seen container, iterator, algorithm but what is this container adapter container adapter means it is not a container it is adapting some existing container and mapping the functions like these are the functions right so this std stack will have these functions so internally inside this std stack there is another container and by default that is dq which we have already studied and you can actually modify this so now you understood stack itself does not have its own internal structure it uses dq for internal operations like to create a array so that it can place it so internally it has to use some functionality so it is using dq and as i said you can change it you can make it vector if you want but that's okay you should use dq because dq doesn't double the size once the existing array is totally full okay so I have already explained how this DQ works internally. So if you don't know, you will get the link in the description field. I have so many lists. You just go for the STL list. You will get this video. Okay. So first point is internally, it uses DQ STL container that we discussed already. And it is a LIFO last in first out. Yes, that I explained you here. And fourth point is, I mean, third one, STD stack allows to push. And yeah, this is very important. If you have not seen what is called stack, it is like we have some place and we keep on pushing the data. Let's suppose we have a list of the data, maybe five and then 10, then two. So we'll push it like this. We'll push five on top of that 10 and two. So this is push and push means insert and pop means remove. So push is easy. Like you will just keep on doing this and let's suppose you want to pop it. You cannot remove 5, 10, and 2. You have to only remove 3, then only you can remove 2, and then 10, and then lastly 5. So this is the order. You have to always go from top, like how we do in the parties, like we have stack of plate, and you always remove the top one. You don't go for the third one or maybe first one. <laughs> we always take the last inserted plate. So I think you have already understood this. So these are the functions we have in stack. Empty means it returns whether the stack is empty and I have copied this from internet so you will get it if you will Google. So size is like returns the size of the stack, correct? Because how many elements are there inside the stack, it will, it will give you that. And again, the complexity is order of one. Top is return a reference to the topmost element of the stack. And the time complexity is again order of one. What is this top? Actually, when you have this stack, you will always have one top variable or pointer, which is actually pointing to the last guy in the list. 
or in the array or whatever we are using to actually implement stack. But the point is the last one is always at the top and this top pointer will always point to that guy. So if you will get this function, it will return this one, last one and push and this G means some data adds the element G at the top of the stack. So that's what I said. We keep on pushing the data on one top of another, right? And the pop is correct. Delete the topmost element of the stack. So there are two important terminology, actually three, these three important terminologies. So top will actually give you the element. It won't do anything in the stack and push will actually insert the element and pop will actually delete the element from the stack and the topmost will get removed. So with this, let's see this program and we'll sum this video. So if I'll compile this, it got compiled successfully. Now let's execute this one. So the important point here, notice that I have a stack of integer type. Notice this and this is a variable. I'll keep on pushing the, so first I pushed two, three and four. So currently four is at the top. Now if I will say print, so I'll come here. Now it is very important point. Notice guys, you cannot iterate over the stack or queue, what I said yesterday, right? So in order to iterate over it, you have to actually remove the elements. So in queue, we used to remove element from the front, but here we'll remove the element from the back. So this is how we do it. We check whether this stack is not empty. If it is not empty, we'll print the topmost guy, which is four in the beginning, and then we'll pop one element, means four is popped out. So we have removed four from the stack, and then we'll go back. Stack is still not empty. We'll come back, and this time top is three and then we'll remove three and similarly we'll print two and we'll remove two and lastly stack will be empty and we'll come out from here. So this is how we have to actually go with this stack. And one more thing guys, I was telling you that you can overload this, right? So std vector and this vector would need the type, correct. So now if you will compile this, okay, what is this? Oh yeah, I just, forgot this, so vector of integer, because you are passing STK, which is type of not only integer, integer comma vector. So let's save this and compile this. Okay, compile successfully. Let's execute this. See, there is no change, 432 this time. And if you'll see before, this is also 432. Now, but internally, now it is using vector. But I know you don't see any difference. Internally, there is a difference. So. This is important. You have to know the internals of the vector and the DQ, which I have already explained in my previous videos, which you will get the link in the description field. And if you know that difference, you will be able to actually use the correct data type for the container adapter, because this stack is a container adapter and you are giving the container type here that what container you want to use here. Don't go without hitting the like button. So thanks for watching guys. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe so that you will get the notification for upcoming videos like this. I'll see you in the next videos. Ta-da, bye-bye, take care.